room to just occupy. A group show it's turned out to be. It was a sort of a pop-up show. It happened pretty fast, though I had the idea of doing a show with a photographer, filmmaker, a friend of mine, Christopher Felver. And we had the idea to take his series called Ordered World and add words to it that had a little impact and meaning so you're able to have some meaning in the ordered world. This all came about around the first time of the Occupy Wall Street and I loved the idea of the 99%, just the 99%. Our ideas came to morph into other just series, just war, just peace, just ideas. And at the same time, a really great employee of mine, Sarah Mason, was going every day after work to sleep at Occupy LA in front of City Hall. And she was very diligent about it, very serious about it. The next thing I know, she says, you're not going to believe this, but it looks like the photo that is on the cover of Time magazine by Shepard Ferry is the photo that was taken by this photographer who was amazing, taking a lot of photos throughout the whole Occupy thing. The photo was chosen by Shepard and it's on the cover of Time magazine as the face of the person who is the occupier, the person of the year. And I went, that's just unbelievable. And I said, let me see the original photo. And the original photo was amazing. And the work that Shepard did was amazing. And since I was already working on the idea of an Occupy show, it seemed like a great idea to just put them all together. So this exhibition was formed. And we have Shepard Ferry in the show. We have other artists. Mainly, it's about Christopher Felver's beautiful collages and Ted Soke's incredible photographs documenting really beautifully the people that were putting themselves on the line. These photos really do show the fear as well as the joy of all of the people getting together and acting like we did back in the 60s. You could stop on almost any one of these and see a narrative. This photo here was really kind of incredible, where he was taking a break, relaxing from a hard day of protesting, and it says, our park at the bottom, a real strange moment. and. This particular picture was chosen by the New York Times to be on the cover talking about what's happening in Los Angeles. And then for the show, we paired up some pieces that we thought worked together, such as this one showing the demonstrators being a little bit defiant, though nonviolent. And here, also nonviolent, in this particular photo, the police in almost the same kind of pose in a nighttime scene. Very beautiful. And here, also the same kind of a diptych, if you would, of the police line and a police woman carrying a baton. And here, a young lady not carrying anything but her peace sign with her fingers in front of the line of maybe 50, 60 police. Really an incredible shot. Ted captured really the essence of what was happening. This picture here of the politicians coming out and telling the people that it's their park, we're behind you. Here, of course, is a really great photo of a girl wearing a gas mask and meditating. The duality of this one really says it all. Over here, a panoramic view of all of the people in the Occupy, including the mural that was painted while they were there. And I know that it was taken down at the end. 
hopefully it'll pop up again. It sounds like the police have it now, but I think this is a historical icon that should move on. This one is really great. In the tent is a t-shirt that says Digital Gorillas, and he broadcasts what's happening live over the internet around the world from his tent. On his computer, he's got Shepard Fairey's giant. Shepard gave us some pretty amazing works for the show. There's two there, Reagan, and then of course, just a nondescript corporate person. The opening, well, it was uh, nonviolent. <laughs> that was, we had great music, we had paintings being made on the sidewalk, sand paintings. Isn't the sand fun because it's so twinkly? No, it's called Black Beauty. It's sand blasting sand. You can buy it in any hardware store. Jesus Christ, Wayne, are you doing this freehand? I'm a master. <laughs> it's worth a million bucks. You know, it's a performance. You have to see the damn thing happening to believe it. Norton Wisdom is doing painting. People that made the bandanas, I think it's called the People's Print Lab, they really deserve credit because they for free gave out bandanas and did silk screening all night and everybody got these free bandanas and posters that they were making. The same bandana that Sarah is wearing here that became an iconographic photo for the well, possibly for the movement. In 1968, I got my car and drove to uh, Democratic National Convention just to be part of it. I've not seen anything like that till now. And that's why it's, it's good. So for my generation, an older generation who lived through the 60s, to see this happen again, I just love it. Anyway, we can keep the movement alive, you know? Well, you know what? It's all the people on the radio and in the newspapers that, that keep talking about this. And they're not going to let this go. And if you have that many talking heads who people listen to, not let it go. Because the 1% make it sound like this is a joke. They, that's their deal. Oh, it's a bunch of hippies in the park. And that's like a joke. But you know what? It's no joke. It's for real. No, it's for real. Yeah. Things are not right. I've been fucked up for a good 10 years. Yeah.